Hello, good evening. Welcome to Business Live. Coming up tonight, Public Interest Accountability Committee PIAC blames drop in petroleum revenues in half year 2016 to inability to hedge oil exports. Also coming up, government anticipates enormous business opportunities as Ghana transits to terrestrial digital television. And today on the Joy Business Van, we take you to meet one of Ghana's finest millionaires. Hello, my name is Daryl Kwao. Thanks for making a date. In our first story tonight, energy think tank ASEP has charged government to, as a matter of urgency, reopen negotiations with Nigeria Gas to avert possible power outages and gas last year cut supply to Ghana as government remains indebted to the Nigerian gas supplier in excess of $180 million. Ghana is currently enjoying some relative power supply, having deployed a number of emergency power plants. Speaking at a press conference, Deputy Executive Director of ASEP, Ben Boache said any delay in ensuring adequate gas supply for power generation could result in power outages by the end of the second quarter. Fuel urgently. We need gas urgently uh, from Nigeria, and we have to set processes in motion uh, to ensure that we can negotiate with Nigeria for resumption of, of gas. There is some amount of gas coming in, but if you have 9 million Staraki B feet coming in, it's just not enough to do anything. So we want Nigeria to increase uh, delivery of gas, and that should be uh, a first priority. And going forward, restructuring uh, uh, of, of the debt situation of the utility companies. Uh, because if VRA cannot raise uh, finances uh, to be able to pay for uh, uh, like crude oil they procure, then it's a critical challenge. How then can they even look at investment uh, requirements? So these are critical challenges. Government should set motion plans to clean uh, 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 the balance sheet of the utility companies because ultimately it's government that led uh, the companies into this through poor decisions uh, and control of decisions that are made uh, in the power sector so we have to find a way to clean the balance sheet fortunately we have the energy sector levy in place which is meant for this purpose so one way would be to sell off the debt we can actually sell off the debt and use the levy to amortize it and give the companies uh, a clean sheet so that they can engage the banks and be able to uh, uh, operate efficiently. And then ensure that the usual government interference in the operations of uh, the utilities are curtailed so that we don't go back uh, uh, into the situation we find ourselves in. And we'll be coming back to the energy sector in a bit because, as we have indicated, the Public Interest and Accountability Committee, PIAC, uh, is blaming a drop in petroleum revenues in half year 2016 uh, to inability to hedge oil exports. We'll have that story a bit later. First, though, Minister of Communication designate Eslo Usio Kufu has expressed government's readiness to resolve outstanding issues as the country prepares to switch to digital terrestrial television. Ghana is now conducting a test run of a switch from analog to digital terrestrial television in Accra and Kumase. Speaking at a panel discussion to commemorate the third anniversary of the Komla Dumo Foundation, Mrs. Osu Kufu said the switch would open up more business opportunities. We are committed to resolving whatever issues have been identified in consultation with all players in the industry. There's enormous potential and opportunity for business development, entrepreneurship and employment avenues if content development is promoted. And so we need to do certain things quickly, including finalizing the policy which will guide this process and manage the infrastructure which has already been put in place. There's a draft policy document floating around. 
we would also review it and look at it and factor in the concerns of the stakeholders. And I'm hoping that this panel discussion would also provide even more information to guide the development of a policy that we can all live and work with for the betterment of all of us. The structures that need to be set up, including um, the guidelines and deliverables that are needed, and how the platform itself is going to be managed is an issue of concern to the stakeholders. It is something that we will take on board and would be grateful for whatever suggestions that may come from this and other meetings and would also include in the um, considerations that are going to be finalized. Now, a full rollout of the technology would mean more TV and radio stations offering various products. Meanwhile, the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Chamber of Telecommunications, Kweku Sechi Ado, has challenged media owners to be creative if they want to stay profitable. Because what is going to happen is that there's going to be uh, the, the, the switch expands the space for content. There's going to be plenty of room because digital compresses material and creates room, empty room. So um, now that we've found love, what are we going to do with it? And that's the question for, for media owners, for journalists, for practitioners. What are you going to do with all this space when new radio stations and television stations are licensed, what are you going to offer the people? What are we going to do with it? Are we just going to have more preachers um, selling us uh, snake oil <laughs> and aphrodisiacs? Or are we going to be creative? It's got implications for business because it also means the fragmentation of the market. And yet, advertising budgets are limited so who gets it are all of these radio and television stations going to make money how are you going to make money with uh, if the economy isn't growing uh, uh, in a manner that corresponds with the expansion of the broadcasting space so i think we're going to have to be really really creative Back to the oil sector, and Ghana recorded a 50% reduction in petroleum revenues from the period between January and June 2016 over the previous year. Now, these were figures uh, highlighted in the 2016 semi-annual report of the uh, Public Interest and Accountability Committee, which has been launched in Accra. Chairman of the Public Interest and Accountability Committee, Joseph Winfo, in an interview with Joy Business, said the situation was a result of technical challenges on the FPSO Kwame Nkrumah and the decision not to hedge in a volatile industry. The small in this report. According to the Public Interest and Accountability Committee, PIAC's 2016 semi-annual report, the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, GNPC, lifted 1.95 million barrels of oil, representing 18.48% of total liftings, from the Jubilee field between January and June 2016. This showed a decline by 39% compared to the liftings done during the same period in 2015. Average achieved price for the Jubilee crude was 40.21 US dollars per barrel compared to benchmark price of 53.03 US dollars, representing a negative variance of 24.21%. Speaking with Joy Business in an interview, Chairman of PIAC, Joseph Winfall, blames the loss on technical deficiencies and counted on some equipment offshore, as well as refusal to hedge oil exports. So there are two factors, really, and uh, it's maybe the easiest one is the uh, you know, fall in prices of oil. I mean, if you, if you compare 2014-2015, uh, with 2016, then you know that we dipped from over hundred dollars to, you know, almost forty something dollars. Yeah, but it seems our our partners got more than us. Yes, our partners did. That is because the partners went into hedging. I mean, the one lifted by ours was not that great because you know we have uh, three other partners. You have 
Talo, you have uh, Cosmos, you have Anadaku. And then GNPC is the one for us, you know. Uh, so each one has to lift and then sell it. Now, the partners went into hedging, so they got a bit more higher prices than ours. Now, it's up to us maybe to query why we couldn't, you know, also take certain measures, knowing that the oil price was falling. But that is not the only reason why the prices fell. Actually, you won't believe it, but during the period, uh, FPSO was down. Uh, for about 50 days, there was no production. Revenues from the petroleum sector during the first half of 2016 amounted to 126.41 million US dollars, which translates to 55% reduction in revenues when compared to total petroleum receipts during the same period in 2015, but 4% better than revenues received the second half of 2015. Joseph Winfull hinted of plans by the committee to be more observant of the operations of the Jubilee partners. I mean, if you look at the daily production, multiply by the, that by 50, and that will be income lost. I mean, not only to the government, but also the partners and so on. There are certain technical faults, partly for routine maintenance, and then secondly, for repair of what they call the turret, you know, uh, is uh, part of the, uh, you know, FPSO, uh, medical care operational, you know, uh, things that had to be looked at. Uh, we did not look into why it took so much time uh, or maybe why it couldn't be repaired early. Uh, that is very technical. From now on, it's our intention, really, to delve more into it because we want to make sure that we can even come up and say this is the expected, you know, revenues. We couldn't attain those revenues as a result of A, B, C, D. So if some of the causes were as a result of inefficiencies and so on, then, uh, you know, the stakeholders will have to sit up and look at how best to improve it. So, so the question here is, is PIAC in the capacity to delve into these issues to probe why, uh, I mean, some of the inefficiencies, as you see, and then also why is it that government didn't go into hedging whilst our other partners were going into hedging and some other issues that were making us lose so much revenue? Now, if you, if you go back to the, you know, formation of PIAC and the structure of PIAC and the rest of it, uh, they have, what, a secretariat of five people. Uh, the members, the committee members are representatives of, you know, defined institutions. Um, you know, they come in, what, meet uh, every other month and then some other. So they are not a working group. They are supposed to provide the oversight. Make sure. Moving on now, and technology continues to make remarkable inroads in developing the industrial and service delivery sectors. Within the food industry, for instance, food vendors are constantly exploring faster and easier ways to deliver services with less stress. Joy Business's Kukua Apia explores the world of food delivery and how it is impacting the food business in Ghana. Are the days when some people were compelled to step out of their comfort zone only to obtain some food for themselves and their families. With food delivery services that ensure food orders are made available at your doorstep within a matter of a few minutes, the business is becoming more tech savvy. Fast food companies such as Mawako and other popular Ghanaian fast food restaurants are utilizing technology to make food delivery easier for their customers. In an interview with Joy Business, manager of Mawako Fast Food, Richmond Pono, stated the use of technology in food delivery cannot be underestimated. Uh, somebody will say, okay, instead of uh, ordering and then it will be delivered to me at the comfort of my, my office or home, uh, let me just bring my friend or sister or girlfriend, whoever, to come and just look at the, the environment. You no know, hygienic aspect, uh, somebody would like to know whether the food is coming from a very hygienic environment and then how the, the people look. You know, it, 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 it involves a lot. So uh, even though uh, people would like to order and get it delivered uh, to them, some would also like to 
to come here and then look at what is happening here, how the food is being served, how it's being prepared, uh, and then what kind of environment that they are getting the food from. But in all, uh, the the other side, it, it boosts the market a little bit because some are living very far and they, they wish to, to have a taste to uh, the, the food. So uh, because they cannot, where they are living is too far and they cannot just uh, uh, walk down here, they would like to, to order and then get it delivered to them at the comfort of their various uh, workplaces and homes. On his part, the public relations officer of Ghanaian startup Food 101 Percy Nanajesi said his outfit has capitalized on mobile food delivery services and will continue to do so in the near future, taking Food 101 from social media platforms including WhatsApp to other internet-based applications, saying the internet is the future of the food delivery industry. Yeah, I mean, you, you, uh, you can't talk about the um, success of Food 101 and then you roll out, you know, uh, what um, technology has done for us. Technology has played a very huge role in our success. I mean, what's up? People, people just, you know, want everything to be easy for them. I mean, imagine you've been in the campus of your home or in your office where you have a very busy schedule and then you just place a phone call or you just, you know, attend to your phone and then text, OK, can, I, can you get me this, can you get me that? In, in the next minute or two, you just have it in your office. It's very convenient, you know, with people and, and that is what basically we do. So far, I can say uh, what really adds to our uh, clientele base, the major platform, is technology via WhatsApp. And then, as I said, we are hoping to move forward to an app where you can download the app on your phone, on your iPad, on your tablet, and then you can just order. The future looks hopeful with technology as far as, you know, Food 101 is concerned, and even food delivery here in Ghana. Yeah, because I think we're not the only people using technology. I definitely know it's helping other food vendors out there. Yeah. With the rapid increase in the use of technology in the delivery of food in Ghana, customers may eventually be spared the hustle that accompanies food acquisition. Reporting for Joy Business, this is Kukwa Apia. You're watching Business Live. We'll be right back with the Joy Business Band. Welcome back. Now, three years ago, data entry officer Na Amele Kwe decided to learn a new skill, hat making. Little did she know it would become her full-time job. Today on the Joy Business Band, we take you to Teshi here in Accra to meet the millionaire aiming to make a hat for the British Queen. The Joy Business Van is brought to you by Busy, making good things happen. For seven years, Namele Kwe, mother of three, was working as a data entry officer for an insurance firm, but she was not satisfied. She wanted to do something extra, so she decided to learn a new skill. I was just going through my Facebook and pages and I saw this hat thing. I decided to give a person a call and everything started from that end. Naturally, I love making things. Anything I saw, I do most of the things. After weeks of tutorials, Namele started making her own hats while she still worked as a data entry officer. Six months ago, she decided to quit and pursue millinery full-time, not knowing what the future would be. In every business, you just need to take that step. That's why the fact that maybe you might not have plenty of people in there, but if you make that effort, that you take that step. One day, um, somebody will look up to you and say, yeah, she started this way, and um, it, it will be successful. Now, Mele has been successful so far, her clients have increased over the past six months as more Ghanaian women get to learn about her hats on social media and through referrals. Now Mele gives me a little tutorial about hat making. This is the material we normally use. It's called cinnamon. Um, 
depends on what the person really wants. These are the shapes we call heart blocks. So we have different shapes here. The ones that the person wants, you just they have to tell you, I need this particular hat, and you have to use your discretion in using the exact things for the person. And a hat, you need to block. It goes through a whole process before it comes out like this. And then you start decorating. Now Mele sometimes gets surprised at the level of patronage, but it's reflective of the quality of work she does. And this, this is really fabulous. I like the African touch. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 as you can see, I love African stuff mm. and I try as much as possible. That's what I'm trying to do now. I do it, but I want to customize it nowadays. If you want a particular thing, you know, um, people really love the kente. So I love to add it, embellish the hat with the kente um, design. For now, Mele, business has only just started and she's got great ambitions too. I really want to see myself making a hat for the queen. <laughs> yes, um, somebody will go like, oh, it's too high a, a request. But what? Nothing is difficult. If only this much, that's at least I can get to this far. Little by little, I'm talking to someone. People are purchasing it little by By all means, the queen might see it one day and say, yeah, now nah, I want one of your hats and that will be the biggest surprise I'll ever have. One thing for sure, if ever the queen gets to see Naomi's hats, she'd certainly love them. My turn to try the hats out. <laughs> And that hat really looked great on me. Well, you can catch uh, the Joy Businessman next week uh, here on the Business Live at 5 p.m. You can also catch a repeat on Thursday, that is tomorrow, on the Marketplace at 1 p.m. on this same channel. Time now for your busy bits. There's anything computers are really good at its redundant tasks, they love them. We humans invented computers because we hate doing the same thing again and again. Every computer has this ability to release their human operators from the slavery of redundancy. But how do you unleash this magical power inside your desktop computer? Learn to copy and paste. Most Microsoft programs give you three options when it comes to copying and pasting. Choose the one you like the most. Using the edit menu, highlight the text or picture you want to copy and select edit from the menu bar and then select copy. Next, click in the document where you want to paste the text and choose paste from the edit menu. Right clicking, highlight the text you want to copy and then right click on the text. Select copy off the menu that appears. Right click where you want to place the text and then select paste from the menu that appears. Keyboard shortcuts. Highlight the text you want to copy. Hold the CTRL key down and press the letter C on your keyboard. Left click where you want to paste the text. Hold down the CTRL key and press the letter V on your keyboard to paste the text. Business Van was brought to you by Busy Making Good Things Happen. Now it's time for our interview of the day. Avoid using public sector to spearhead the bid to drive economic growth within uh, the agricultural sector if the initiative is to yield the desired results. That's the advice from the chief executive of Dilex Finance, Ken Thompson, to the new government. Here's more in this interview. It's a bit sad that 
it's taking this length of time for uh, this issue to come really to the fore because I've been speaking about this since 2014. In 2014, these are things I said publicly. I said that we were addicted to foreign goods and services and the way to cure that was agriculture. In 2015, I said the economy was heading for a crash and it was agriculture that would get us out. In 2016, I said the economy was broken and it was a Greek that was going to get us out. And we've known this for forever. I mean, even uh, during the, when the colonialists were here, we knew that a Greek was the area where we had competitive advantage. And my biggest disappointment so far has been that in all the time we've known this, all the time I've been speaking publicly about this, None of the economists you know, have come out to support it. Nobody, nobody has come out to say, well, this is what we've got to do. And all they keep doing, doing is generating figures upon figures which nobody cares about. And I've said it so many times. So it's nice that um, the government accepts it and the president has made a commitment to it. But we've also got to be very careful because I remember that in 2000, when the MPP came to power, I was extremely excited because... Uh, the president had his special initiatives. Most of them were. Thanks for watching our show tonight. There's more news on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. My name is Daryl Crowell.